Hey there, Apana here and I am back with another video. In this video I'm going to be going through the process of adding art to the stage and getting the camera to follow the player around so that we can have a parallaxing effect so that the background can look as though it's in the distance whilst our character is moving in the foreground. So without further ado, don't forget to like the video and join the Patreon if you want to meet the community of people that I'm helping out with this project and the people that want to ask for requests for me to carry out. So without further ado, I'll see you in the video. Alright, so before we continue, I just want to make it very clear that you should download the files, the art assets that are freely available in the description so that you can continue with the rest of this tutorial. From here, what we're then going to do is grab all the art assets and drag it into the Smashville folder that we made in part two of the series. I already have it here, so I'm not really going to demonstrate it, but you guys should get the idea. So on the stages, go to Smashville and then in Smashville, put all the art assets that is linked in the description for free. So check out the description. And here is where the fun begins, because this is now the part of the video where we're going to start adding some nodes. So what you want to do is on the test stage, add a child node and add a sprite. You want to add two, so I'm just going to duplicate that by pressing Ctrl D. Now, out of the art assets that we have, we're going to go to stage one and put that on the first sprite as a texture, and then go to stage two and add that onto the sprite two node as a texture. And so what we're going to do is we're going to drag the first sprite on top of the stage and we're going to do the same thing with sprite 2 and then from here we're going to adjust the transform of these sprites okay so for the first sprite we're going to go to the transform and make this scale 2.167 by 2.167 and then we're going to do the same thing for sprite 2 2.167 by 2.167 now what we're going to try and do is align this first stage to go edge to edge of the template that we've created and then do the same thing with Sprite 2. From here on out, we can now rename these so that we know what they are. So we can say main stage one and then main stage two, like so. Don't forget to save. Then from here, what we're going to do is add a parallax background and then five parallax layers. So here's the parallax background you know, that you want to select, drag this to the top underneath test stage and underneath parallax background you want to add five parallax layers so you could just select one and then hold control press D four times and then you have five layers and under each layer you want to add a sprite node so we can do that for each. There you go. So now from here what you want to do is collapse everything in the scenes tab over here and select from template down to main stage two. So select everything apart from parallax background and you wanna make it so that this re uh, black rectangle, inner rectangle of the template matches up with the yellow rectangle from our camera node. So it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, I like to have it so that the template is slightly below this yellow rectangle and you're gonna see why in a second. Okay, so here's where we're gonna add the images to the sprites themselves. So for blue sky, we're going to add image 101 into the texture. Then for the fog, we're going to add image 96. Then for building backgrounds, we're going to do image 104. Then for the cloud, we are going to do, where is it? Image 103. And then for the main background, we're going to do background.png. And then after this, we're going to adjust the scaling of everything. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is adjust the scale on each of the sprites for each of the parallax layers. So for example, the blue, the blue sky is going to have a scale of 1.977 by 1.977. There should be an annotation to show you what the scale dimensions are for each of these sprites. So have a look at that and I'll see you there once I've completed it. Okay, so once you're done with it, it should look something like this. Everything should be in the right scale. Okay, and now from here, all we have to do is click on each of the sprites and put them in the right position. So there isn't really a specific position to put them in, but the sky sprite should 
have each of its corners touching the yellow or black inner uh, rectangle of the template. The fog should just cover the upper half of the scene. They are building background. Now what this should do is adjust itself so that it fits the background of each of these buildings as you can see over here. The cloud should be put up here in the center. I can make the position on the x axis zero. And the main background, this part is important. The main background looks like it's in the right position currently. I don't really have any pointers except for the stage to be covering the river itself. I think that's a good uh, positioning. From here, the next thing to do would be to change the scale for each of these parallaxing layers. The scale adjusts how fast the parallaxing layer will move in relation to the camera whilst the camera is moving. And so I'll have another annotation to show you what the values are for each of these parallaxing layers. And so for clarification, it should be 0.5, then 0.3, then 0.5, then 0.3, then 0.5 to make it very clear. From here one of the, the last things to do would be to go to the main stage 1 and make the Z index minus 2 and then for us to go to main stage 2 and then put the Z index on 3 and then for us to turn off the template and it should look something like this. So now that we're done with adding the art to the stage the next, we, the next thing to do would be to have our camera track our player character. And so before we add any scripts to our camera 2D node, the first thing we need to do is reduce the zoom from 1.77 to simply just one. In the first video that I made where we introduced the camera 2D node, I made the zoom 1.77 when in reality it's just meant to be one. And so for us to add a script to our camera 2D node, what we're going to do is click on our camera 2D, press attach script and let's call this stage camera then you're going to replace this code with something like this so this is a very basic code all it's really saying is uh we're going to get a node in here which is fox and then we're going to make the position of our camera equal to the position of our character this is just so that this is a very basic camera script it's just so that it's able to track this one player character that we have which is fox if your player character is not named Fox, is named something else, then put the name of your character. This is a very, very basic camera system that is going to be temporary for now. In the future videos, we're going to make this better when we add more characters. And so from here, what we can do is go back to 2D, click on our camera 2D and make it sure that it is the current camera. And all we really have to do is play the game and see if it works. So as you can see the parallaxing is working we can see over here that i didn't do the background for the buildings properly and also i don't think i aligned the stage properly as you can see is not convincing enough and so this is something that we can adjust to right now so to fix the background all we have to do is go to the building background layer and just move the sprite around so that it is aligned properly there we go a quick simple fix as for the stage, I think, oh, okay, so I figured it out. So the problem was actually the ledger. So if I turn off the main stage two, this ledge on the left side, for example, can be moved down to something like this. And then the ledge on the other side can be moved down to something like this. And so if I, if I enable the main stage two again, and I play the game, it will look something like this. So as you can see everything is fixed it looks like it's how it's meant to look and well done you've made it through another video in the next video you're going to be looking forward to something very beautiful because this is a video i know a lot of you guys have been waiting for which is going to be the hitbox system it's probably going to be a multi-part video or at least a quite a long video at least when it comes to the explanation the coding bit shouldn't take too long whatsoever but explaining and actually making the hitbox and adding and adding it to the character might take a while so i hope you guys are buckled up and you're ready for that video so without further ado don't forget to like the video and check out the patreon because i am accepting requests and i am willing to carry them out 
Through the Patreon, you also get access to my Discord server where you're able to interact with the community that I'm growing. And since it's uh, growing at the moment, I'm able to just, you know, talk to everyone, chill, vibe, help out anyone if they need some help. So don't forget to check it out and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.